Automotive Mythbusters Part 3 at David's Farm. Well, this section's obviously about oils and lubricants, as promised. First thing is, they have a viscosity rating. The higher the number, the thicker the oil is. 10W30 is quite common, but actually nowadays in most modern cars, it's 5W30. First myth is, you don't often need as many oil changes as all those oil change companies tell you you need. Just because it's spring doesn't mean you need an oil change. Just because winter's coming doesn't mean you need an oil change. Oil never wears out. It just gets dirty or contaminated. How you tell you need an oil change is how clean it looks. If it's really hard to see through when you put it on your finger and it's black, well, then it's dirty and it's probably time to change it. If it's a diesel engine, it'll probably be black anyways as it just gets those free carbon particles in it. If you can easily see through it, even if you have 5,000 kilometers or 3,000 miles, well, it's still probably not time to change it. This here is what's called conventional oil. It was distilled or fractionated in a plant that took oil from the ground, like maybe it came from Iraq. Synthetic oil is a man-made molecule. It's generally better, and that's why it costs a lot more. And you don't have to change your oil when you use synthetic oil as often as you do when you're using conventional oil. You can sometimes go 10, 15,000 kilometers with an oil change, or 10,000 miles. The Germans invented synthetic oil way back in World War II. Overfilling your engine with oil doesn't cause seals to blow out or anything like that. What it does cause, if the level gets too high, it causes the crankshaft and the spinning weights and everything to start hitting the oil and splashing it in the pan and causing it to foam. And then when the oil pump is sucking up foamy oil, it's making low oil pressure and not very effective at lubricating things like the crankshaft, which are under a lot of stress, and that can damage your motor. Also, it can cause, when it's overfilled, oil to blow out the PCV tube, sucked back into the burning compartment of the engine, and that can cause a lot of smoke. When you take your oil cap off or your dipstick out in cooler weather, it's very common to see like a white milky substance on there, which people lead you to believe your head gasket's leaking or you have a cracked head or a cracked block. That's not very often true. It's just that the fact that the dipstick tube is much cooler than the motor and the cap is often on a little raised st stock, you know, so it's up here and it's much cooler than the motor. And the blow-by that happens in all engines when the fumes get past the piston, which is basically exhaust, contains moisture. All burnt fuel puts out, you know, steam. So the steam collects on the coolest points, condenses and precipitates, mixes with the oil, and gives you the same color oil on your dipstick tube or your top of your dipstick or your cap as the oil would be as if your coolant was leaking into the block for some reason. Old engines produce gunge deposits, that cakey flaky stuff that's in there. By not doing regular oil changes or using low quality oil or non-detergent oil, it's more likely that that happens. And the gunge can fall down in chunks into the oil pan and get picked up by the strainer filter thing that sucks the oil up out of the pan and start clogging it, thus reducing your oil pressure and possibly damaging, damaging your engine. It's most noticed at idling that your oil pressure is very low. Some engines, when they get very high miles, and you're running at a high RPM, the oil that's collecting in here doesn't run down the passageways by gravity to get back to the oil pan to be recirculated. It runs back very slowly because it's collecting gunge in those passageways. The rocker covers become full, and sometimes there's enough oil in the rocker covers that under high RPMs, your oil light comes on, or you're all of a sudden, suddenly, your gauge for your oil pressure goes right down to zero and you're actually damaging your engine. The so solution for that is take the rocker covers off, get rods or any kind of device and ram down all those holes by hand and shove that gunge into the oil pan. Then you have to either take the oil pan off and get the gunge out, clean the strainer on the oil pump, or put another chemical in the top of the engine, let it run down, let it go into the sludge that's in the oil pan and dissolve it and then take the oil plug out and drain the contents and put fresh oil in.
if you've opened up your air filter box and there happens to be a PCV filter in there, it's a, usually a white spongy looking thing or sometimes another place in the motor and it's all clogged up with deposits. Well, that's no big deal. You can just change it. It's just telling you your engine's getting tired and there's more gases getting past the pistons called, uh, called PCV gases or blow-by. If you do run one of your car or truck engines out of oil, the very first thing to go bad is the crankshaft. It can score it, which then reduces its diameter and makes it loose in there. Then when you do add oil again, it's got low oil pressure because of all the spaces where the oil is seeping out. It can cause the bearings to seize onto the crankshaft, and then they lock on, they melt on a little bit, and then they spin, and that's called a spun bearing. That's very bad for, the, for your engine because then once it's spun, the little hole that's punched in those bearings that goes to the top of the rod doesn't line up with the pointing at the piston anymore and it's not squirting on the piston then lubricating the cylinder walls. Normally the very first place an engine seizes when it runs out of oil is not the cylinders, it's the crankshaft. If you have run your engine low on oil to the point where that may have happened and you did get it running again, it's also a good idea just to take off the oil cap while it's running and see if you've got lots more blow-by or puffy blow-by like little poof poof poofs. That's telling you you've scored your cylinder and you may have cylinder damage too. If you have a manual transmission, you'll have gear oil in it. This is a common one. Some manual transmissions just use 10W30 motor oil. It depends on the transmission design. Some engines, that, I mean some cars that use the 10W30 use it because when you use gear oil in the cold climates, the shifter gets too stiff to shift by hand. It just feels like you're moving it in a pot of grease. If you're doing extreme use with your transmission, it's a manual transmission and it was supposed to have motor oil in it, uh, it's a better idea to run this oil. I mean, it may be a little bit stiffer to shift when it's cold, but it'll make your transmission last longer and put definitely less wear on the gears and the bearings. If you're adding lubricant or changing the oil in your differential, make sure it says hypoid on it. Differentials have a weird gear shape with a wiping action. There's not just two gears rolling against each other like this. They're rolling and sliding at the same time. That's called a hypoid gear. And that needs extreme pressure gear oil. That's why it has the hypoid rating. You can tell that oil because it has a very weird smell. Some, something like the smell of armpit sweat. Funny thing too, even some standard transmissions on light duty vehicles, manual transmissions, use automatic transmission oil in their standard transmission. If you're changing your oil on your automatic transmission it'll usually tell you on the stick what kind of oil you need so that's a good thing when the engine's turned off it's always overfilled on an automatic transmission because half of it leaks out of the torque converter and goes back into the reservoir so you check them when they're idling in park this oil doesn't wear out either but it does get dirty or it even gets burnt because when clutch plates or bands start slipping it can burn the oil that creates a lot of heat so you always like to smell this oil when you're checking it not just check for color uh, when you have bearings going bad or differential pins coming out the oil may be silver after a drive a little bit then you know your transmission may be working fine but you know you gotta get it serviced if you have an old engine with a mechanical fuel pump that's a fuel pump that's mounted on the engine block that's pushed by the camshaft to pump fuel. It's possible too that the diaphragm went bad and you've got your oil contaminated with gasoline. Of course that's not good because it increases the oil level, it thins out the oil making it less effective, also it could catch fire and blow the top off your motor. So it's best to change your oil when that happens. It happens all the time with small engines if the needle and seat is leaking in the carburetor and then the, it's gravity fed and well you're not paying attention it's filling up your crankcase too with gas and oil. Well there's another type of lubricant in your car. They're all kind of slightly different uh, so read your owner's manual what you're supposed to put in there but the rule of thumb is for most vehicles uh, hydraulic oil you know for like <laughs> a tractor or something like that is actually perfectly fine oil. It's anti-wear hydraulic oil. It may not be red, it may be clear, but it's absolutely fine. In the worst case scenario, the next closest thing is just automatic transmission oil. <laughs> Some engines like Audis and Volkswagens use mineral oil. Driving around too with one or two liters of oil not in your crankcase because you're 
oil level is low isn't actually going to hurt, hurt anything. It's just when you start going around corners quickly, you'll notice the oil light flashing on or maybe the oil gauge losing pressure because then all the oil sloshes to one side of the pan and the pickup strainer is not sucking it up. So if you ever see that happen, quickly pull over and, or just drive normally and get some oil. One more thing some people don't even notice is oil actually helps cool your motor. And having an oil cooler on your motor is a good thing too if you're pulling trailers or racing. That's enough for now. If you've got any more ideas for my automotive MythBuster series you want me to solve or explain, just send me a message. Okay, keep watching.